I've asked myself that question. Um, where I think this team is, where I think this team can be, um, how good are we, how bad are we? Um, I, I don't have that sense yet. Um, you know, I, I go back to the Marquette game. We, we had opportunities in the first half to, to really extend, and we didn't do it until we go up seven at halftime. Uh, you know, you get up to 20 and you end up winning by whatever we did. Um, you know, I, I think guys, and, and you see this, guys are still kind of feeling their way through. Um, and I, I think once we get a level of consistency, I'd probably be able, to, uh, be able to answer that question better. When you go back and you look at the two Final Four teams you had, obviously Conley and Odin and, and Jared, was it easier to tell with those teams early because you had those types of pieces? Or was it kind of the same feeling with those teams yeah. too? No, I, I think, you know, and I'll, I'll use Jared as an example. When, when you have a guy like Jared Solinger, um, it, was, it was such a security to know that if everything went wrong with the action or whatever we were doing, you could throw it to him and, and something was probably good was going to happen. And, you know, be it him scoring, getting fouled, kicking it out for a, a wide open shot. Um, you know, Greg wasn't playing yet at this point, but I knew. Uh, yeah. What was coming down the pipe? Um, so I, you know, I, I think that that's there's a beauty to that, and there's a beauty to kind of what we have right now because I think we got a lot of, as you said, a lot of different pieces to the puzzle. Um, we're still, it, and, and I keep saying, it's such a unique basketball team. Uh, from you know the four seniors plus Anthony, uh, no juniors, one sophomore, and the rest are freshmen. Cam being a redshirt freshman, but that's. Uh, a unique dynamic, uh, just in terms of, you know, you wish you had a couple more juniors out there that have been through the, the ropes of it. But I, I've said this, I, I do like this team. But I think there's a, obviously a huge difference between guys like Odin and, and Jared because they were post players that you could just throw in and maybe they get a right. foul. But do you get the <coughs> sense with D'Angelo, is it too early, that maybe if you get late in your action or things aren't going well, that he's somebody that you could count on to make something happen out of nothing? Yeah, you know, he's, he's been pretty good. I mean, we all know he didn't play particularly yeah. well to take care of the ball, take care of the ball against Marquette. But, um, you know, he does have uh, ability to make plays, and, and, and I like that about him. As I said, when he came here, I'm not sure what position he is. Is he a one, is he a two? But I know he's a basketball player, and, and I do like that. I think we lacked that uh, last couple of years. I mean, Deshaun could, could get buckets as he always liked to term it, but um, <laughs> you know, I, I think from the standpoint of, of uh, it's, it's a true story, I was sitting one time, we were getting ready to play South Carolina, and I was sitting back with the teams warming up, reading a book, and this phone buzzes next to me, and I didn't know who phones I picked it up, and it said, get buckets. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know how to open it, or whether it was a code on or whatever. So after the game, I stood and watched, and it was his phone that somebody had texted him to get by. And, uh, I don't know where I was going with that, but it's a shocking I think uh, that's what I deal with on a day. But coach, I get buckets. Yeah, I get buckets. Um, but I, I think D'Angelo can make those plays. I mean, and that's something you know a guy like Michael could do at the end of the shot clock, could get inside a defense. You know, the, the game winner in here against Wisconsin his freshman year, I said, hey, we're going to horns. I'm going to tell you which way to go. You make the read. And, and I'm not putting D'Angelo in that category just yet, though.